A 17-year-old girl is found dead in a drainage ditch out in Texas. With no arrests nor suspects currently identified, we ask who could have done this and what is law enforcement doing behind the scenes? We speak with Detective Eric Barnes. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. Sad story out of Texas we want to talk to you about right now. 17-year-old Caitlin Hernandez, a senior at Roosevelt High School in San Antonio, supposed to graduate this spring, somebody who spent time with family, loved dogs. She went for a walk last week, only to wind up dead. Her naked body found in a drainage ditch under a bridge less than a half a mile from her home. Apparently, a man had found her phone in that area, Then law enforcement respond, they find a blue jacket, and then they find her body. Now, at the time of this recording, there have been no arrests. There have been no official uh, suspects identified. The ME office indicating that Caitlin was strangled. Her aunt, Crystal Rodriguez, told a local media outlet, KSAT, that the family is, quote, barely holding up. We're taking life right now, one minute at a time. She wanted to become a veterinarian. You all took her from us too soon 17 years old. All right, for that, let me bring on Detective Eric Barnes. Um, Just a horrible case. And Detective Barnes, thanks so much for coming on. Um, You know, the first place that I want to talk about here is the male friend. So it has been reported that Caitlin was walking with a male friend. Um, This is before she was killed. Caitlin's family allegedly saw him later in the day without Caitlin. And he said he didn't know where she was. Apparently, he is cooperating with law enforcement. What do you think that questioning is like? Well, that uh, the questioning with, with this individual is going to be very intensive. Um, he is the, the quintessential link to your crime. So you have to spend a lot of time, you know, just getting down to the details with him the last time they were together, where they were at, and if there was anybody else um, involved or, or that was possibly with them. Do you think if there was more to his story than it is initially being reported, if they believe he had a part in it, would we know right now, or is law enforcement going to keep that very close to the chest? I think at this point in the investigation, that's something that law enforcement is going to keep very close to the chest. Um, you you don't want to jump the gun in cases like this. Obviously, um, there weren't too many witnesses around, and so they're probably just making sure they have all their ducks in a row before they proceed. Talk to me about the state in which she was found. Uh, For me, I think that says something. You know, the idea of being found in this drainage ditch under a bridge close to her home. What do you make of all that? Well, just given the facts of of how she was found, it gives off the impression that something happened and went wrong really fast. The fact that she didn't travel too far away from her home, you know, gives you the the idea that, um, you know, maybe... Soon after she left her house, she was attacked. Um, The fact that she doesn't have any clothing on, I think is a telltale sign that a potential sexual assault is into play. And also the fact that, um, you know, she was found in a drainage ditch. So the suspect was trying to cover his tracks very quick. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I I think you're right about the sexual component there, although we can't confirm it. Um, It seemed to me, though, there was an effort to hide her body, but not hide her very well. Right. I mean, you have to it's still relatively in the open. And that would signify to me that perhaps this is somebody who didn't have the means or the opportunity to dispose of her body in a different way. That's correct. You know, the the fact that she's hidden uh, so close to her home, it it definitely points out that someone knew the the area pretty well. Um, But it also signifies that maybe at some point in the process that maybe in in trying to uh, to hide her, that maybe it was interrupted. You know, maybe a car passed by, maybe an onlooker um, distracted them, and and they decided to move on. And they didn't take the phone. Whoever did this didn't take the phone, left the phone there. That's correct. You know, sometimes when uh, perpetrators are involved in these crimes and they're not really thought out too well, you know, you rush. You know, the paranoia of getting caught kind of interferes with the planning process, and you make mistakes. The... um. I imagine they're testing her body as well as the blue jacket and the phone for what fingerprints, DNA. Is that what you think is might be happening behind the scenes? That's correct. Um, DNA is going to be huge in this case. Um, you want to make sure that you 
locate any any parts or any evidence that may have been touched by the suspect. The phone is gonna, definitely going to be huge, but a big uh, a big question mark will be you know the fact that she was hidden in the ditch. If water you know played a role in cross contamination or actually uh, disturbing evidence. So the ME office, and this is what it's being reported, um, says that she was strangled, but there was no visible signs of trauma. What does that tell you about the uh, killer? Well, it, it gives the appearance that the killer was someone that she trusted. You know, typically uh, for a strangulation to occur, someone had to get close to her. And the fact that there's no physical signs of trauma would indicate that there wasn't a physical fight or a struggle that took place leading up to it. So it had to be someone that she trusted enough to let her get close to her in a position that they could strangle her without an all-out fight taking place. I've covered cases like this before, and a lot of experts say that strangulation is a very intimate method of killing someone. Sometimes it shows a, a level of anger because it takes a st effort to watch somebody die like that. And, and again, I can't confirm at this point that the cause of death was strangulation. It could be that the Emmy's office uh, f saw that she there was a part of her that was strangled, but I don't know if that's the exact cause of death. Having said that, strangling somebody, I've always been told, is a very intimate way and says something about the perpetrator. I think so. I think with uh, strangulation, strangulation, you know, in, in some murders, if a knife is used or a firearm is used, you can do that from some distance, but the the closeness that you have to have with a physical being to actually physically um, cut off their their breathing and to be close enough that you actually can feel their their pulse and to actually feel their skin while they're taking their their last breath. You know that is a very intimate intimate type crime scene. So obviously we have a lot of questions as to what happened here and who's responsible, but I think there is a through line through a lot of the stories we cover, and that is. It is so important to know who's around you. It is so important to know who you're surrounding yourself with. That is why I am so excited to talk about the sponsor of this episode of Sidebar, truthfinder.com. I really want you to hear about this because honestly, when you think about our content, I can't think of a better service that can provide actual safety for you guys. So Truthfinder is one of the largest public record search services in the entire world. Their goal is to help people like you learn the facts about the people in their lives. Here's how it works. So you go to their website, truthfinder.com, and you type in a name. For purposes of this, just type in my name, Jesse Weber, okay? And you type in my name, and within minutes, you're going to get access to reports that include information like phone numbers, addresses, associates, previous arrests, criminal convictions. By the way, you type in one name, I, I kind of got stuck on it. I was typing in a lot of names. And I will tell you what is really useful is if you type in an address, it tells you the registered sex offenders that may live in that area too. And that's the point. Unless you use Truthfinder, you may never really know the reality about the people around you. And especially if you're in the online dating world, going out with complete strangers, it's a good idea to run a background check on these people before meeting them in person. And you can easily do that on Truthfinder. And right now you can get 50% off of confidential background reports. Just go to truthfinder.com slash LC sidebar. I, I want to ask you about something that um, Caitlin's aunt had said, Miss Rodriguez she said, quote, I used to live in this area, so I know what you see, you don't say, but I'm begging you, please, please, somebody speak up. What do you make of that statement and how difficult will it be to get answers from people? Well, I could tell you one of the, uh, one of the, Biggest misconceptions in murder investigation is that the detective solved the case. Uh, in my experience, that's not true. It's normally the neighborhood that solves the cases. So we can't do our job without the help of the public. And so um, I think that her aunt was speaking out and just saying that if there's someone that saw something, please say something, because that could be the link that the police need to make the arrest. And I think it is the, the culture um, in some neighborhoods that people don't get involved with police business. They they tend to stay closed off into their own affairs and they don't want to get involved with law enforcement. I'll tell you, a it's also being reported that a neighbor who apparently didn't want to be identified, wanted to be anonymous, um, talked about what she heard that night. And the quote is, I actually saw two males standing next to the ditch shining a light down there. After a couple of seconds of that, I then heard a female shout, hey, I want to say it was in the ditch. It echoed like it was in the ditch. But then after that, it just kind of went quiet. What do you think about that? 
Well, I think uh, that's very uh, that's very problematic um, in terms of just trying to to place a timeline into uh, when it was that she was actually uh, deceased. But I think it also has a lot of promising upside for law enforcement because it clearly identifies that there's multiple witnesses that can kind of help you piece together the unknown in this case. Uh, it's possible that those individuals that were shining the light could be persons of interest that police need to speak with. And the individual that saw these uh, people shining the light could be potential witnesses. So I want everybody to know that um, if you have a tip, if you have information, uh, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You can also uh, text Tip 127 plus whatever tip you have to crimes. That's 274837. Or you can use the P3 tipped apps. In fact, Crime Stoppers is apparently offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to a felony arrest. Um, Detective Barnes, in your experience, um, A, I, as you were saying, you, you encourage anybody with relevant, important information to come forward. But how do, does law enforcement? Um, and investigators sort through all the tips, sort through all the, the leads, sort through all the information that might be coming in about what happened to Caitlin. Well, when the calls come in, investigators typically will work on the calls as a call by call basis. They'll treat each individual call as its individual uh, piece of the investigation. They'll work to either verify uh, the factual information left by the caller or either uh, rule it out as saying, okay, this is going to be a valid tip or no, it's not. And they just take their time with those tips. And I think the anonymous tip line is a great way, especially in neighborhoods where people may not be uh, very motivated to speak with the police out front. It gives them a, a avenue or a channel for them to reach out because they don't agree with what happened in, um, in their neighborhood as well. It's just a really, really sad case. Um, you know, Caitlin Hernandez was in the prime of her life. They talked about how she was about to graduate. She meant so much to her friends and family. And for this to happen is just unthinkable. And um, we're wishing your family the best, and we're hoping for a, a successful resolution. Uh, whoever did this will be caught and held accountable. Detective Barnes, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody, that is all we have for you right now here on this episode of Sidebar. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Speak to you next time.